One of the main drawbacks for people venturing into Photoshop to work on an image is how much time it takes. While you can do some amazing things inside Photoshop, it does take a little extra time to open Photoshop and then start working on an image. This summer, Adobe's updated a tool that makes your workflow go so much faster, and that's the contextual taskbar. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to use it, how to get the most out of the contextual taskbar in Photoshop. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and I'm teaching you Photoshop one step at a time. If you're new to Photoshop and want to learn from the beginning, I have a series of videos that I'll take you through the learning process of Photoshop. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to start from the beginning with Photoshop. Now, today's episode is all about the contextual taskbar and how to get the most out of it. So no matter what your skill level is in Photoshop, all of us can benefit from utilizing some shortcuts to speeding up our workflow. And in this episode, it's all about saving time using the contextual taskbar. And speaking of shortcuts, I have a whole video on learning the keyboard shortcuts in Photoshop. And I also offer a list of shortcuts that you can download for free over at my website. The shortcuts are listed for both PC and Mac computers. I'll leave a link in the description below for the shortcuts on the freebie page, as well as the videos that talk about shortcuts. Next, let's get into Photoshop and see how this contextual taskbar works. All right, we're inside Photoshop here. Let's go ahead. And the first thing you wanna look for is what version of Photoshop you're working on. So if we go into about Photoshop, you can see here that I'm working on 25.11.0. That's the newest release of Photoshop. So let's go into file. Go to new let's grab a new image that we'll bring in we'll start something from a, just a blank canvas here so as we come in here you don't see the contextual taskbar and the reason is it's not activated so if your screen is like this then go up to window pull down go all the way to the bottom almost and go to contextual taskbar now this little bar shows up and you see this little bar on the side and you have the ability to drag it and move it and place it wherever you want. So this is one of the things that makes this bar super handy. It's always there. It's always visible. You can always have access to it whenever you need to. But sometimes it's in your way, so you want to move it around a little bit. So let's start with a real simple procedure. So when you open up a blank document, you can see over here in the layers palette, we just have a background, a white background. You can import an image, for instance. So let's go ahead and import an image. We'll grab a, an image here and import it. It'll come in with all these anchor points so you can drag it and make it to whatever size you want. So we hit enter. So we have our image here on its own layer right here. So now let's say we want to do something. What else does the taskbar offer us? So first thing it offers us here is to select subject. So let's go ahead and select the subject. And you can see here that it put, put the selection marching ants around this. And from there, if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and uh, do command J or control J on the PC and pop it up onto its own layer. So if we turn that off, you can see we've got it's on its own layer. But it didn't do a great selection. Photoshop didn't do a fantastic selection. So let's try that again. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Come back to this and we'll do select subject. So now we have a selection here. You can see that the taskbar changes in terms of things that it's offering you. So the first thing we come to here is the ability to change and edit your selection. So you have all these options here. So let's say we want to expand the selection and we want to expand it by say two pixels. And then let's say we want to also go down here and we want to feather that selection. These are pretty common tasks that you'll do is maybe expand a selection that the computer made. And then you're going to also maybe do some, some uh, feathering to soften that edge. So let's go ahead and do that. So now what we've done is we created this selection here and we like it for the most part, but let's go ahead and hit command J and we'll bring it up onto its own layer and let's see how it looks. So it looks pretty decent. It's not great, but it looks pretty decent. And now when we have a subject up here, we can go ahead and zoom in on the antlers and see what we've got. So we've got some, you can see how the feathering softened that edge as opposed to a sharp 
type of an edge. Now, but we don't have it quite right. So let's try this in a different way. And again, we're gonna do select subject. Now we also have the ability here to invert the selection. So if we wanted to invert it, we could invert it right here, or we could make it into a mask. So let's go ahead and make it into a mask. And you see what Photoshop did. It made it into a nice mask over here. Now this taskbar has changed again. So it allows us to add to a mask or subtract from a mask, whatever it is that we want to do to it. So this is pretty awesome. And, and the idea here is in the past, we'd have to go put in a mask. We'd have to come up and grab our paintbrush. All of this stuff happens real fast by using this bar. And no matter how big you make the subject, that little bar is always going to hang there. And you have the ability to move it out of your way if you want. And you can click here and pin it somewhere if you'd rather have it set there. But right now, as we look at this, let's say we want to add to this, to this uh, mask. So let's go in here. We'll zoom up just a little bit. And we're going to go add to mask. And look what it does. It gives us a brush already. So whatever brush you use last, it's going to give you. And so we can put this, oh, say at 75%. And we can change the size of it with our bracket keys. And let's go ahead and just brush in some of that antler that was missed on the computer selection. Same thing over here. So you have the ability to start altering this mask however you want. And it really is a really cool way to do it. And it's so fast, you're, you're right there. It gives you the mask, gives you the brush, gives you the black and white over here to work with the masks. So it's a real simple way that you can work on a mask real quickly. So we grabbed an image, brought it in, and then we're able to alter the mask. Let's try something different. All right, so let's go into file and go new, grab a new file, create, and let's go ahead and bring in another image. So we'll hit import image, and we'll bring in this little tin can. You can see that it comes with all of the frame around it. So if you want to do, it automatically thinks you might want to scale it, which makes total sense, right? When you're placing an image that you might want to scale it somehow. But the other advantage that happens here is let's say you'd like to do some real quick maneuvers to it. Like for instance, if you wanted to rotate it, click on these little rotation buttons. If you wanted to flip it horizontally, you can see these arrows are going left to right. Now that just flips it horizontally. If you wanted to flip it back, you can. If you want to flip it vertically, click on it, flips it vertically. So those real handy things that you're used to using whenever you're placing an image, this is a real quick, the idea here is to save you time. You don't have to go through menus and find where is the, where is the transform. The other thing that happens is since it has these brackets around it, as well as all these anchor points, if you click inside, right click inside, now you've got all of the typical things that you would get when you're doing a transform. So let's say, for instance, you want to rotate it. There's your little arrows. You can rotate it. You can click inside again, right click inside again. And let's say you want to, uh, let's distort it a little bit. So we can kind of move it in like this. There, it's now it's a little taller can. And let's say that's what we like. So now we can press enter or return. So this is a placed image, right? This is not a typical image, it's placed. So when we come in here, we can go to this layer, right click, go all the way down and go rasterize the layer. And sure enough, this is gonna be a rasterized layer. So now we can kind of actually do a little bit more with it. So inside here, we have our options again in this taskbar, select subject. So let's go ahead and do that. It selects the can pretty well. And what's nice about this is let's say, for instance, we want to get rid of everything but the can. So a real simple way, this button right here, this second button does an invert of your selection. So instead of remembering the keystroke of shift command I, you can just simply click this button. And now you can see we have the marching ants around the edge and around here. So that reminds us that everything else is selected, not the can. So now we're just gonna hit delete. And now we have just the can sitting on its own layer. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit the like button. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all the comments in the comments section. So feel free to leave a comment or suggestion or question and I'll get back to you. Now, if you'd like to contact me directly, use my email. 
My email address is terry at imagelight.com and I'll answer your questions and add you to my mailing list so you can be alerted of my next video released that way. So now we have our tin can that's, a, that's elongated since we changed it all on its own background. Now if we want to go up here again and we're going to go to new, let's open a new file, we'll make it the same size, create. Now on this we have the ability to do a generation, right? So we can generate an image in this spot. So let's go ahead and generate an image. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to create a background. So let's go with forest with leaves on the ground. Okay, so we're gonna generate this image. This is a photo. So we're gonna go ahead and hit generate and see what it gives us. So real simple ways to get to that generating tool that comes in in the newer versions of Photoshop, being able to generate backgrounds, generate images that they're going to use. And so here we got a really nice picture of a forest. And of course we have our arrows down here. We can go pan through and see which ones we like the best. Mm, let's see, that one looks pretty good. So let's use that as our background. Now let's go ahead back into our tin can and we'll just simply drag this over, grab our move tool drag this over into our new background. So there we have our tin can floating above the background in our image right here. And our, we just did this simply with our little taskbar that pops up and allows us to do that. So every tool that you use in Photoshop, you're gonna have the ability to do uh, different changes to it. So for instance, here we're on the background layer and let's say we'd like to change how it looks. Well, if we come over here, we can get right into our adjustments and let's go to hue and saturation, for instance, and we will saturate it quite a bit more. And maybe we'll change the hue, make it a little more, uh, let's just make it a little more yellow, yellow and green. There, like that. So that allows us to adjust things really easily on the fly. We didn't have to make anything. We didn't have to do anything. It built us our own adjustment layer real quick, like all from this taskbar. All right, so we have our tin can sitting on this background. So let's go ahead and grab our text tool. Grab our text tool and we'll draw a text box. And we have some type here, so we can just go ahead and type in gluten-free soup. So there we have it. We can take this and highlight it real simply. And we can come down here and change our font to whatever our fonts are right there. So we can go ahead and grab a different font, any font that we, we would like. Let's go ahead and uh, make it like this. That's a little thin. Let's do something thicker. We'll do a, there we go. And we're gonna have our ability to change the size right here. It's like a little scrubby slider. We can change the size. We can change our attributes here. This is left justified, this is center justified, and this is right justified. So if we, we'll just put it back onto center. We also have some ability here with some text. If we click on that, we can see that we can change the, uh, the style of how much space between the lines, the line spacing. So we pull that down. You can leave it on auto. But if you want to put it on something small, they're all going to bunch together, right? Or you can just come up here and say, oh, let's go to 300. So that tightens it up, but it's if we want to do it more custom, we can just come in here and we can say 265 and see how that tightens it up and we have the ability to do that. The other thing it has in here is kerning, so you can just grab this and let's go ahead and say, Instead of plus 10, we're gonna go minus 25. You can see how we can tighten up that text if we'd like to do that. We have the ability to make it bold. We can make it italic and we can make it underline. So let's just leave it at bold. And now we have our text and works out pretty great because we can now move this around however we want to wherever it makes sense, right? And let's say we don't like the red, we wanna make that into a different color. Let's come in here and we'll grab a green. So you can see how quickly we can go and make changes to our text just by 
using our taskbar. Our taskbar has all that stuff for us, which makes it super simple for us to work with. And it just adds the layers as we go. And so we didn't have to go up into any of these menus to do any of the work that we normally would do because we were using this taskbar. All right, let's show you one more here. And of course, this can be a way to start your image, you know, your process of things that you're thinking about. So in this case, we're going to generate an image totally from scratch. So let's go ahead and generate an image. And we're going to say horse in garden of roses. It's going to be a photo and we're going to just hit generate. It's going to think a little bit and we'll generate, see what it generates for us. Of course, we'll have our choices that we can go through. Oh, there's a nice one, a horse in a garden of roses. There's another, and there's another a little close up if we wanted it. So let's go ahead and go back here just a little bit. That one looks pretty good. We like that. So you have all the different uh, changes that you can make to it. So for instance, if you came here and clicked on this, you can then say, hey, we'd like to have a reference image to work with it. So let's choose an image to reference it. We'll use this sunset shot of a turtle that I shot in Hawaii, and we'll open that up. And then we'll generate it again. Now it's going to use our prompt, which is a horse in a garden of roses. And we're also going to have that reference image that it's going to access and say, oh, they want it to look like that style. And sure enough, look at this. They gave us a horse. They changed the color of the roses because that kind of matches that theme of tone of that sunset. And we can see the dip different images that it offered us to work with. And if we want to go back to our originals, those are still there because you'll see down here. Now we have one of six that we can choose from. So having the ability to do this kind of work quickly through our tools when we're working and having that taskbar that we can actually access very quickly, do all the things that we want to do, and we're not up here looking for menus and trying to remember shortcuts and things like that. It's a, just a real simple process. The contextual taskbar is a great tool to get used to and really speed up your workflow. So have it on whenever you're working in Photoshop and look there first. Look there first. Is there a way that this will speed up my work? Whether it's fixing a selection or changing an adjustment or working on a mask, those are all things that are real simple that they're right there, easy to click and get to. We all know that's the place where you can do a generation if you're trying to generate a background or a particular image, but it's so useful for so many other things, text, all these other options that you can work on that taskbar and you can get the things real quick and you can get your work done even faster. Thanks for watching. See you next time.